We've seen war, but what does peace look like in the Gulf? We'll show you next at 5. And you'll meet a relieved Bay Area military family, just one of many, who prayed for peace and got it. Also tonight, murder for the Mitchell brothers, the Bay Area porn kings who own this theater. We'll talk live with one of their X-rated stars. And the latest on the rain and how it could be bad for your health. Dr. Nancy Snyderman explains why and what you can do about it. Those stories plus Bert, the Dirt Gardener, next at 5. This is KPIX Eyewitness News at 5. USA! 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 Cheers for America as Kuwaitis quickly reclaim their country. Rebuilding it will take a lot longer. Good evening. Rejoicing in the desert and relief at home. The guns are silent. The bombs have stopped falling. And now it's up to the diplomats. Iraq has agreed to talks on a permanent ceasefire. And as Mike Hagedis tells us, the American armed forces are standing tall. It was a mirror image of the last days of Saigon. This time the helicopter is landing, not taking off from the embassy. And the Marines are the winners. Today, there are no ugly Americans in Kuwait. I, I want to kill Saddam. I hate Saddam. But the liberation had a bitter side, setting free the tales of murder and kidnapping. My brother also, he wanted to go to the mosque to pray. And before he, uh, he go, they uh, catch him and uh, took him to somewhere that we don't know where. Tell them, keep your hands on your head! Iraqi prisoners are being questioned about war crimes, and Iraqi commanders have agreed to meet with Allied representatives to discuss prisoners of war. We're going to get together and send high-level military representatives, and we are going to get back our POWs, and we're going to do it fast. There's no timetable for bringing the American troops home. The victory came too fast to prepare for that. One thing's for certain, the soldiers themselves are ready. What's next for you? Go home and see my wife and my kids big time. Mike Haggett is Channel 5, Eyewitness News. And the number of Iraqi prisoners is staggering. The Allies say they're coming in too fast to count. Estimates range to uh, up to 175,000 soldiers that have given up. And to put that in perspective, compare it to the population of Fremont, 173,100. And the Iraqi casualties could reach 85,000 killed and wounded. By comparison, 79 Americans are known dead, 45 are missing. 28 Americans died when their Scud missile, or when that Scud missile hit their barracks, among them a young man from Oakland. Jonathan Williams was 23 years old. He'd been in Saudi Arabia only six days before he was killed. Williams was an engineering student at Old Dominion University in Virginia. He was in Saudi Arabia as a reservist with the 475th Quartermaster Corps. Jonathan Williams' family is feeling a terrible pain tonight, while other homes with other families in the Gulf are feeling relief. Robert Honda introduces you to one family divided by the war and united in happiness tonight. There is that part. Barbara Seath and her husband Bruce have been involved in Operation Yellow Ribbon ever since their son Jim was sent to the front lines as a Marine marksman. But Barbara has been publicly against the war from the start. Bruce says the war was unfortunate, but the right thing to do. A letter from Jim to his younger brother Jason arrived today, and the family differences came out as Bruce read Jim's descriptions of a sniper mission. What you have done seems cold-blooded and cruel, but in, your, but in your heart you know that tonight you have saved many friendly lives, as you do each time you squeeze the trigger. In this age of stealth technology, the deadliest weapon on the battlefield is the stealth warrior, the Marine Corps sniper. You head home, mission accomplished. Oorah. That's uh, the you want You want Jason to read that? Yes, I do. I want Jason to know that, and I want other kids in this country to know that, so they can grow up not knowing that war is not something that you see on television. Barbara, you don't seem to agree. No, I don't agree with that at all. I think I don't like any kind of killing at all, and I'm anti-killing, and... Um, I think that's violent, and I think it glorifies it. The differences seem to be the mix of emotions many people seem to express about the war. For now, a celebration will take place. Their son is coming home. But the emotional tug of war will hit home, too. I would much rather he'd possibly been doing something like a chaplain or a cook or, or something like that along those lines. And um, But I, I didn't have a choice in it, so I'll, I still love him, and I'll still su support him when he comes home. In Los Gatos, Robert Honda, Channel 5, Eyewitness News. 
The military support group Operation Yellow Ribbon plans to hold a welcome home celebration for Jim and other returning troops on March 20th. And thanks of another kind from Germany, the Bavarian town of Oberammergau is offering free vacations to American veterans of Operation Desert Storm. It's a murder story right out of the tabloids, but it's real. Tonight, one of San Francisco's porn kings is accused of shooting down his own brother, the other porn king of San Francisco. Artie Mitchell was killed last night. Jim Mitchell is under arrest. The two brothers owned and operated several X-rated movie theaters, including the O'Farrell Theater. Manny Ramos is there right now. Manny? Well, Kate, the sign on the door of the famous O'Farrell Theater only tells part of the story. It doesn't say anything about the fact that one of the brothers was murdered and police say that the other brother is responsible. This case has sent shockwaves throughout the porn world and has put an end to the reign of San Francisco's kings of porn. Now, police say 45-year-old Artie, the younger half of the Mitchell brothers, was shot several times and they say his older brother Jim is a suspect. He'll be arraigned tomorrow. The Mitchell brothers are world famous. Their adult theaters and their X-rated films are shown everywhere. The brothers were always in the news, always in court, fighting pornography cases. But Artie led a quiet life in Court of Madera. His neighbors liked him a lot. They say he was killed at his home last night. Police say they don't know why older brother Jim went there or why he would have killed Artie. There was no indication that he was going to come there uh, to prepare them for this, no. At this point, you have no motive? No motive. He had a Winchester 22 rifle, lever action, concealed in his pant leg, and he had a 38 uh, handgun on a shoulder holster. Nice guy. It didn't matter to me what his business was as long as he was a good neighbor. Police say when they picked up Jim, that he refused to talk to them. In fact, he just asked to see a lawyer, and as I said, he'll be arraigned tomorrow. Reporting live in San Francisco, I'm Manny Ramos. Manny, what's the reaction been there at the Mitchell Brothers? Well, right now, it's, uh, they haven't said anything at all. You see a couple of people still in that theater. We've seen a couple of people walk out. We came by earlier. The people said they didn't want to talk about what was going on. Uh, the Mitchell Brothers had kind of a family atmosphere. The people in the news media knew them quite well, did a lot of stories with them. It's kind of a family atmosphere here, and uh, they've always been very cooperative with the press. Today, they were very polite, but said they, they had no comment. All right. Thank you very much, Manny. Still ahead on Eyewitness News at 5, it may be raining, but the drought may be worse than anyone thought. Up next, we'll take you to the Sierra for a look at the new snow and the new estimates about the snowpack. And the rain may be good for the ground, but not so good for your health. Dr. Nancy Snyderman will be here to explain how the weather is affecting your allergies and what you can do about it. A second day of rain soaked California today. Rain here, of course, that means snow in the high country in the Sierra. Yes. We sent Ken Bastida out to check on the snowpack to find out just how much relief we can expect from what's going on up there right now. Speaking of that, Ken, what is going on up there right now? Well, uh, it's going on me right now. It's going on my head. It's rain. It's kind of nice to see rain at uh, 4,000 feet. It would be better to see some snow up here. It is snowing up above at 8,000 feet. We talked to some state hydrologists who were up there today and to give you an idea how bad we need this moisture they say that it can rain and snow like this every day for the next six weeks and california would still be in a drought okay. hydrologists with the state department of water resources making that assessment today after taking their measurements of the dwindling sierra snowpack and the news is not good even with this week's back-to-back -back storms, California is in deep trouble. There is less snow in the mountains tonight than there was just a month ago. And the water content of what is falling now is almost non-existent. It's still bleak. There's no change. We haven't had anything in terms of precip that would make really any significant difference. The storm that moved through the valley areas yesterday didn't do anything up here at elevation. Most of what is falling in the mountains is not sticking, not adding to the critical snowpack. Still, the storm is giving fire crews a chance to get a jump on what officials say could be the most severe fire season on record. U.S. forestry crews use the wet weather today to light a number of control burns along Highway 50 in an attempt to clear out tons of dry brush in advance of this summer. Pretty weird to see them lighting fires on a day when it was snowing in the mountains, Dave, but they say that it has taken that long to get enough moisture on the grasses around here so they can do that safely. They say they're very concerned about what the fire season will be like uh, uh, this summer. They're also telling us that they will need 300% of normal rainfall for the next two solid months 
just to get California back to normal. Reporting live from Pollock Pines, I'm Ken Bastida. Wow, that's a sobering thought. Now, about uh, that snowpack, how does it compare to the infamous uh, drought year of 1977? Well, everybody remembers how dry it was in 1977. They are telling us that, uh, well, what they measure is the water content of the snow. If you took that little bit of snow and you boiled it all down, how much water would you actually get out of that? They say the measurement they took today is about three and a half inches less water content than the same measurements for this time in 1977. We are three inches below where we were in that drought year. The water content for this Sierra snowpack, it's, it's devastating. So let's hope that it just keeps on going, as Brian says it well may. Thanks, Ken. All this rain and the rest of it just over the horizon doesn't begin to ease all the worries about the drought, as you heard. Conservation still very much the key word tonight. Mandatory water rationing going into effect tomorrow all around the state. Closest to home, people who live in Marin will have to make do with 50 gallons of water a day, no matter how much rain falls in the immediate future. San Francisco got about an inch of rain today. That's the good news. The Highway Patrol says it brought with it more than the usual fender benders. And uh, this scene says it all. This scene, yes, there it is. On again, off again, rain kept people guessing all around the Bay Area. Dublin and the East Bay got less than an inch of rain. Rainfall totals didn't add up to much. Rainfall, California, is still only half of what it could be for the season. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, thank God it finally got around to raining. Oh, well, while the rain is a welcome relief, it's also causing some people to complain about their health. People who struggle with allergies at other times of the year are dealing with headaches and sinus problems right now. Now, Dr. Nancy Snyderman is on call tonight to make some sense of all of this. And Nancy, is the rain causing that pressure feeling around your sinus and sinus infections? Well, for a lot of people, Kate, it certainly is adding to the problem. But I think this is very important for people who are suffering right now to understand that there is a difference between allergies and sinus infections. And a lot of people are complaining of that sort of lousy post-nasal drip. There is a difference. But the humidity or change of climate anytime can trigger someone. Let's take a look at the telestrator for a second. And let me show you what the, we're, we're talking about. These are the sinuses. They are paired. This is the maxillary sinus. This is the ethmoid sinus. And this is the frontal sinus. And if you look at this side view, smack dab, literally in the center of your head, is a sinus back here called the sphenoid sinus. Now, when you have allergies, the lining of these sinuses can get inflamed and a little stuffy. And what that means is they can block off your nose, and that's when you get a stuffy nose. Now, if you get a sinus infection, a sinus can literally fill up with a lot of fluid. And why that's important is because, believe it or not, these sinuses have to drain uphill to get in your nose. So it, particularly if that's, uh, there's a lot of pus or mucus or inflammation in this area, it may not drain quickly to the nose, and that's when you get this uh, terrible pressure and pain. Notably, when you lean over and you complain that you feel like your head's going to pop open, it's this sinus, the ethmoid sinus. And when you complain that you have pain in the back of your eyes, it's usually this sinus, the sphenoid sinus. Overall, believe it or not, one of the best things you can do, whether or not you have plain old allergies or you have sort of a chronic sinus infection, is to drink a lot of water. The reason? The more water you drink, the less it cuts down on those thick secretions, and the easier it is for your sinuses to drain. But overall, it's important for people to understand there is a difference, and a lot of times I see people who think they have sinus infections, and all they really are is a little dehydrated. Sounds like it hurts just thinking about it. What happens if somebody's having a little bit of trouble now? What are the signs that it's getting worse or it's turning into some sort of a sinus infection? For people who have a history of allergies, they can uh, pretty much spot what's, what's going on stuffy nose, a little bit of pressure, but if that pressure does not respond to over-the-counter medications or their typical things that they use uh, at another time of year for their allergies, or if they start to have a yellowish green discharge from their nose, a lot of cough, even some wheezing in the chest, it's time to see your doctor because that can mean that you need a set of sinus x-rays and uh, you might need to be treated with some antibiotics. All right, thanks very much, Nancy. You're welcome, Kate. The Embarcadero Freeway finally started tumbling down today. Demolition got underway this afternoon, but Caltrans will keep all the lanes open through the weekend. It's an effort to keep roads clear for the Chinese New Year parade set for Saturday night. Come Monday, however, the lanes will be shut down, leaving only one running north from the Bay Bridge toward Fisherman's Wharf. Caltrans suggests you avoid the area entirely. The East Bay Freeway that was also damaged in the earthquake will be rebuilt. 
That's the uh, Cypress structure. An advisory group met today to decide what to do about the Cypress. The recommendation is to rebuild it along the Southern Pacific Railroad tracks. Caltrans won't make a firm decision on that until July. Rebuilding would begin in the summer of 1993. The cost is estimated at $695 million. It's raining, it's pouring, but how long will it last? Bob Hallman joins us next with the answer to that. And then, what does Bernard Dirt Gardener think about all this rain? He's going to join us to tell you what you should and shouldn't be planting right now. And coming up tonight on Eyewitness News at 6, more on what's happening in the Gulf and how it's hitting home. First, Craig Miller will be here to tell you why burning oil fields in Kuwait doesn't necessarily turn into higher prices at the gas pump. And rebuilding Kuwait is going to cost billions of dollars. A Bay Area company has a big head start in getting the business. Those stories at 6, Eyewitness News at 5 continues in a moment. As you heard earlier, uh, trouble with the Mitchell brothers today. Artie Mitchell was shot to death last night about 10.20. His brother Jim is in jail in Marin. Uh, he was arrested for the crime. And um, Manuel Ramos, in telling the story, said that there was a shockwave that went through the Bay Area when that news broke. And uh, for those of us who knew the Mitchell brothers, it was shocking. They certainly didn't seem like likely candidates to be involved in a story like that. One of the women who became a star with the Mitchell brothers is Nina Hartley. This is Nina when she appeared on People Are Talking on Channel 5 last year. For the past seven years, Nina has been a featured dancer and stripper. Now she's one of the best-known adult film actresses in the country. Nina Hartley joins us now from Oakland. Um, what was your reaction when you heard the news about what happened to Artie Mitchell? It was a shock. Um, you know, you never think you're going to know anybody that this happens to. It's always the other guy who who all of a sudden shoots his neighbor, and I never thought I would actually know someone involved in a situation like this. Well, you know, from where we stood, it, they seemed to get along so well over the years. How about your, you had a closer look at them. What was your evaluation? They had a very um, intimate relationship as brothers. You know, they've been in business together for 20 years. A very high profile, very volatile, um, emotional business, show business, and also being on the front pages uh, of the San Francisco Chronicle and national papers probably once a year for 20 years. Um, I don't know why this happened or what the, the reasons were for this, you know, current dispute, but they're a very high-powered bunch of guys, and... Uh, it's one of those things. But you didn't. You never saw anything more than the usual give and take between brothers? Oh, no, never. Nina, what role did the Mitchell brothers play in your career? Uh, they were the second place that I ever got a chance to work as an adult entertainer, and they were very important for me because it was through them that I finished college, uh, working one day a week on Saturday nights, and also uh, where I got a sense of myself as a performer, as a woman, uh, as a sexual being, and as... Uh, as someone who really wanted to do what I was doing. So they gave me a very important place uh, in which to find out a lot about myself and earn a good living at the same time. Were they good employers? Were they good to their employees then? Um, they had their good points and their bad points. I think they were, uh, I give them a B plus as employers. Sometimes they would, uh, you know, come in and say, we're going to try something new tonight without asking about it first. But generally speaking, they did listen to the um, complaints or the suggestions of the dancers. Any sense of what will happen to the Mitchell Brothers uh, business now? God, that's so up in the air. So many things could happen. My sincere hope is that it does stay open, both as a place of work for many women uh, who are supporting children, supporting themselves uh, through school, through college, and as a uh, national and international tourist attraction and, and institution in its own right. Um, it was on the forefront and the foreground of very many um, changes in the adult entertainment industry. And for that reason alone, I would hate to see it go under. Thank um, you, Nina. I'm sorry we're, we're running short yeah. on time, but we appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you. Just minutes ago, police told us Jim Mitchell will be arraigned in Marin County tomorrow. Kate? And looking ahead to the weekend and the forecast for the weekend, Bob Hallman is down in the Weather Center right now to tell us if rain is in that forecast. Boy, it sure is, Kate. We have uh, had quite a bit of rain in Northern California. More on the way. Let's take a look at the satellite picture. We can show you what's happening. First of all, the flow across the Pacific is coming straight across the Pacific zonal, right into the California coastline. And as a result, we are seeing good amounts of rain in the area. And the weather systems, one on shore right now. This one will be coming in. This one right here will be coming in later tonight. And this one a little later in the 
weekend out here. So we have several days of that lined up. All right, let's take a look at the radar picture because we can see some fairly intense thunderstorms around the area. And the thunderstorms have produced some tornadoes, and that's in the area of Fresno, uh, Tulare County, actually, the place called Goshen. That's where the Highway Patrol has reported a tornado. Now, right in these areas, and one near Fairfield, another one up toward Chico, and another one up in the Sierra foothills, we have some thunderstorms right now. We don't really expect any tornadoes out of them, but we could have some severe weather during the night, and they produce an awful lot of rain in a hurry. So we have a lot of rain. By the way, San Francisco just went from being in the place to have our second driest uh, year in history to being the sixth driest. That's how well this storm is done. Just an inch did that. Just a little over an inch did that. All right, thanks, Bob. The rain has left many Bay Area people hopeful especially gardeners, uh, and it's left them a little confused, too, wondering if now is the time to do any planting. Well, don't you know who has the answer to that? Here he is, Mr. Dirt Gardener himself, Bert Bertolero. He joins us from Concord. How about it, Bert? The rain is great news, but uh, we're still in a drought. What are you suggesting? Well, that's true, David, Kate, and, but you can, you can take and still plant, providing that we take and plant and water, water wisely. We take and we take the normal soil and we work some redwood soil conditioner into it because it'll hold 20 times its weight in water. We add some polymer gels, which are the P4 materials such as this, which of course, a tablespoon of the material swells up, but takes up to 200 times its weight in water and releases it to the plant whenever it's necessary. So it's marvelous material. So you can garden as long as you just take and water wisely. Excuse me, what exactly should we plant? What are you suggesting? Well, a couple of things that we can plant because there's many, many things that we can set in, Dave, is roses. And this is an ideal time to put out bare root roses because you want to get a rose that has three strong canes, three canes going in three different directions, and you cut to an outside bud so you have the new growth. You take it so that it's grafted, such as this, and let's go down to the illustration that we have here, and you'll see that through this, you spread the roots out very, very carefully, as well as you can, and you plant this bud graft, which is again like so. So it's about two inches above the surface of the soil, and you fill in with all of the good prepared soil. And then you put a basin around it, so when you do water, the water will actually stay in this basin, and you'll find it'll do quite well. You add some bone meal into the soil because the bone meal actually is a slow-acting fertilizer. Doesn't give your plant a tremendous boost, but it does give it the food that it needs. In a dry year like this, Bert, where do you plant? Do you plant in special locations? I would say you'd plant where you're able to get recycled water out to the uh, area, Kate. Uh, but I would say that you'd want to do it in a more compacted area because uh, you plant so that uh, you're able to get maybe one or two crops growing in that same area and that given spot. There's we a tree that. behind you, Bert. Uh, are, are you suggesting trees should be uh, planted at these times? Oh, yes, and I think that you should plant in trees because you should plant trees, the fruit trees, that are suitable for your particular area. Some people buy them and they're six feet high and they plant them in the ground six feet and then they do not realize that when those trees will produce uh, fruit, you're going to find that it is going to be uh, uh, actually a 12-foot stepladder. So you take and you prune the tree so it's down low. So you cut it off like so, and you cut the side branches. Now, when, when this tree is, is ready to produce fruit and it's going to be about eight or 10 feet high, you're going to have a good, good success. All right, Thank thanks, you very Bert. much, and that's the gardening tips for the week. See you next week. Thanks. And when we come back, how America is celebrating the victory in the Persian Gulf. And then coming up at 5.30 on the CBS Evening News, from gas masks to party masks, celebration and relief in Israel at the war's end. Now that the war appears to be over, a new outpouring of patriotism is sweeping the country. The Miami Herald is just one of many newspapers coming out with a collector's edition. The headline says it all. And a silkscreen company in Jacksonville, North Carolina, is wasting no time cranking out Victory in the Gulf t-shirts. There's a marine base nearby, and they figure families will buy the t-shirts to welcome their loved ones back from the Persian Gulf. And that is it for this edition of Eyewitness News at 5. I'm Kate Kelly. And I'm Dave McAladden. Thanks for being with us. Be sure to stay right where you are. The CBS Evening News is next with Dan Rather reporting from Free Kuwait.